This is such a cool feature. Admittedly, it's experimental, but I'll talk to you about how to enable it in a second. The feature is about showing you interesting performance metrics within the performance panel. You can think of it as a landing page of some sort for the performance panel. The information currently is around core web vitals. So that's largest contentful paint, cumulative layout shift, and interaction to next paint. Interaction to next paint actually needs an interaction. So normally, if you reload, you'll see you don't have an interaction to next paint score, but as soon as you interact with the document in some way, in that case, I just clicked on a paragraph tag, it will then show you what was the interacted element. Let's go to a website which might have some more meaningful metrics. So I'll go to hey.com and we've got a largest contentful paint. It's even showing us what the actual LCP element is, a cumulative layout shift score of 0 0.02, that's nothing. And if I maybe click on the menu there, we now get an interaction to next paint score. However, this performance insights feature is really cool because you can also set it up for field data. Field data means it comes from real users and Chrome collects that as part of the Chrome real user experience monitoring report. You need to opt in because ultimately it's sending the URLs that you're visiting over to their API. But in this case, I'm fine with that. I'll click OK. And now we get two values for each metric. Remember, there are three metrics as part of Core Web Vitals. The LCP metric turns out when I run it on my local machine, which is that left value of 684 milliseconds, super fast. But the real user monitoring metric, if you like, or at least the aggregated version, is one and a half seconds, which is still really good. With that being said, this is really just a short video to demonstrate the feature. How these percentiles work and how the scoring mechanism works is outside the scope of this video. Once you've enabled Crux access, you can change these field values so it shows the origin as opposed to just the URL that you're on. I typically keep it on the URL. And you can also show mobile field metrics, which understandably will typically be slower because a lot of mobile devices have more constrained hardware, maybe are on slower or spotty network connections. You can also throttle the CPU and throttle the network, which I highly recommend doing, especially if you're using a fast developer machine. And that's pretty much it for this performance landing page. However, there's a little bit more. If we hit this icon, that will start profiling and reload the page. And when you do that, you actually get this performance sidebar, which kind of gives you additional information and it overlays it on the performance panel recording. I don't know about you, but these performance panel recordings can always feel a little bit intense. So I guess this is their attempt to make it more understandable. They put certain annotations over the performance panel recording, which I'll show you in a second. Here's the sidebar. You can open it up with this icon and you've got layout shift culprits, which right now doesn't really show you anything meaningful. So you have to continue using this layout shifts track, which is fine. Let's close that. Then you've got LCP request discovery. And this is interesting because it gives you a bunch of interesting recommendations. It shows you the LCP image. It tells you, oh, in this case, the LCP image was not discoverable in the initial document, which is a bit weird. It looks like it was, but we don't need to do a full deep dive right now. But what's interesting is the way that it overlays this kind of annotation on the network track of the performance panel. And what this is showing you is it's showing that there was effectively a bit of a wasted opportunity. Overview.webp is the LCP image in this case. We can open up that summary pane. Yep, there's the LCP image. Not too big. It started out at initial priority of medium. I don't know if that's contributing to an issue here, but ultimately using something like preloads or maybe early hints that could have helped. You can also open up this LCP by phase box and that will show you how did your LCP value come to be? What were the subparts that formed that LCP value? And in this case, it's always pretty much going to be the same thing depending on the type of LCP element. But it looks like it's a combination of time to first byte. That's time to first byte of the initial HTML document, resource load delay. So in other words, what is the time that the browser spent not downloading and rendering that image? Then you've got resource load duration, which is pretty much how long did the browser spend downloading that resource and resource render delay. Once the browser actually had the resource in question, in this case, an image, how long did it spend almost having that image in its cache, but not being able to display it on the page? That could be because the main thread was blocked or it could be for other reasons. Let's quickly skim through a few examples. I've got this little Core Web Vitals demo page and you can see the LCP request discovery is basically telling me I haven't met any of these recommendations, which is true. In this case, I am lazy loading the main LCP image, which is that image of a rose. The LCP image is not discoverable in the main document, which is a problem. And you can see when I open that up, 
we get this little annotation just like we saw before and main one.jpg that's the lcp image and it's just happening like way too long after the main html document is loaded and that massive delay that could be because of other render blocking resources or maybe because it started out as a low priority which definitely could be a contributing factor in this example it's actually a combination of all sorts of issues i've introduced a complicated request chain to get that image into existence just to demonstrate the effects of doing so and moving on to the lcp by phase section now in this case even the resource load delay is 14 percent, which actually matches over a second of time which is very significant i would invest my effort into the resource load duration which is massive seven seconds way too long and in this case it's a one megabyte image Th this is some low-hanging fruit in terms of optimization because if i just converted that rose to a avif or webp file that would get a lot smaller taking a look at another example on walmart again opening up the first of all the lcp request discovery so this on the surface of it it doesn't look too bad the lcp image which is this resource right here it is downloaded almost alongside the main html document but i guess that main html document also took a second in this case which is way too long and so maybe getting that file to download a bit earlier that could be made possible with whether it's preload or early hints or something like that don't underestimate the power of http response headers to actually tell the browser what resources the web page might need then as usual if we open up lcp by phase some interesting stuff here you don't or at least in my testing, I haven't typically seen large element render delays. And this is sometimes a sign. And just to be clear, that's when the browser has the resource, LCP image in this case, but it can't render it on the page for whatever reason. But having a delay of a second, that's significant. And it could be because of these maybe render blocking resources, like CSS is typically render blocking. So maybe the browser just couldn't display anything at this point. Not too sure because I haven't done a deep dive, but sometimes it's just because the main thread is very busy and there's so much activity that the browser can't actually render stuff to the page. In this case, it might be more connected to network congestion and certain files needing downloading before anything can be displayed. Quickly, another example on the Google Store website, LCP request discovery. So there's a perfect opportunity for optimization here because if I close that so it's not distracting, You've got the main HTML document, and then you've got the LCP image here, which if I open up the summary pane there, you can see it's this one, the image of four phones. The problem here, however, is why is there so much other network activity happening, but the LCP image seems to just be delayed massively. And maybe because it's a low priority request, it seems to have a, yes, initial priority of low, possibly adding fetch priority of high to that, depending on where it's referenced, that would help. But definitely you don't need like analytics coming in before the LCP image, do you? I would definitely look into optimizing that. And if we open up LCP by phase, it seems to all be connected to the resource load delay. So just to be clear, that's not the resource load time. That's not how long the browser actually spent downloading that resource. It's how long the browser spent being delayed before it can even begin to download that resource. And that's a problem. So I would definitely look at maybe what other network resources are happening here that delayed the loading of the actual LCP image. And moving on to the final example, here's a random bakery website that I found. As usual, we open up the LCP request discovery section, and here is the LCP image resource, cupcake-cake-banner. We can open up the summary pane just to confirm and help validate our understanding of this page. So there are the cakes, and it seems to be part of an auto-playing carousel. But yeah, one thing that stands out to me straight away is that first of all, the image is JPEG as opposed to maybe a more efficient image format like AVIF, but then also it's a megabyte, which who knows, maybe that came from a content management system. And oh, also it looks like there's an initial priority of low. So possibly the browser just didn't deem it important enough to download. If we close that, maybe the browser just didn't deem this resource as important enough to download earlier on when it knew about it but we definitely don't need fbevents.js happening before that LCP image, or maybe you do. Again, I don't want to make too many assumptions. And just to paint a more complete picture, we'll open up LCP by phase. And definitely even the resource load delay is, yeah, that's worth paying attention to eventually. 
I would straight away look at this one megabyte image, which is no doubt connected to the fact that the resource load duration makes up for 72% of that overall LCP time, which is a problem. And you can see how the annotation on the performance panel right here, resource load time, definitely matches up with the length of time that resource took. And as you would expect, that resource load delay matches the period of time between the main document being ready and that image actually being downloaded. And just for personal curiosity, I took that one megabyte image of those cakes, which was the LCP image, chucked it into Squoosh.app, used an AVIF compression format at 50% quality. And to me, to my very untrained eye, it looks fairly similar. I can see it maybe changes somewhat slightly, but I'd be very happy with this. And that conversion has led to a 95% reduction in file size. So it's now sitting at 55 kilobytes, which I think is great. And no doubt using this image instead of the one megabyte image, which is currently being used, would help really bring down this resource load duration and hopefully turn this 3.15 second LCP time into something a little bit better. Right now it's that needs improvement for the rating and we really want to get that to a good rating. In terms of how you enable this, I'm currently using Chrome Canary. So give that a try or wait for this to arrive in Chrome Stable. With the DevTools open, you want to hit the settings cog, go to experiments and just to filter it down, I'll search for performance panel enable. And these are the three experiments I enabled. Performance panel enable live metrics, performance panel enable annotations and performance panel enable performance insights. Once you've enabled those experiments, you can use the shortcut Alt and R and that actually reloads DevTools rather than the web page. But just to be safe, I'll reload the web page as well. And there you go. This is what you should see when you navigate to the performance panel. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.